Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a little snowman animation, kind of like a frame by frame animation in After Effects from an Illustrator file, and we're going to import it into After Effects, and we'll see what we can do with it. So here we are in After Effects with a new project opened. If you don't have a new project open, which if you have After Effects open, you should, just go up to File, New, and then New Project. In this project, we can immediately save if we want to, Shift-Command-S or Shift-Control-S, and we can find where we want to save it. I have a folder set up, a recording folder, in which I have my Illustrator uh, folder with the Illustrator file, and then my After Effects folder, which will save and here we'll call it uh, Animated Snowman. How's that? And we'll just save them right in there. Okay, so first thing we want to do is go check out that Illustrator file. So I'm going to hop over to Illustrator. Once again, if you guys have your own file built, that's great. You can mimic what I'm doing here uh, if you want to build your own thing, not a snowman. Uh, but also, if you check out the tutorial that I posted on the channel, the Illustrator uh, creating a snowman or drawing a snowman tutorial you'll actually follow through and get to this point with this illustrator document and what is this point this point is that we have the layers panel over here and I have on each layer a different frame of the animation and then we have a background layer so notice frame one is shown right now he's just right here holding his hat frame two he's tipping his hat a little bit frame three is tipping his hat a little bit more so with each, all of those uh, visible, you can see that he just is going to tip his hat back and forth. And I'm going to show you how to set that up in After Effects. One thing I'm going to do is go ahead and hide the background layer. We can keep the layer. It's not going to hurt anything. You'll see here in a second when we import this guy into uh, After Effects. So I'm going to save this down. And I have an Illustrator folder. You guys saw this, Illustrator, After Effects. So this Illustrator fo folder, Draw Snowman, Light Bright Style, We'll just save him right there and replace that and just hit OK. It's all good. We just saved the Illustrator file down and now we're going to go back to After Effects. And in this project panel, we can either double click in here or we can go up to File, down to Import, Import File. And from there, we need to navigate to that Illustrator file wherever you've saved it. And we're going to click on him, but we're not going to click Open yet. We're going to change import as to import as composition and not composition retaining layer styles. And I'll show you why later. I'll explain why I would rather import it as a composition. And then I'm just going to hit open. And I have all the layers. It actually looks like it imports it as separate Illustrator files a little bit in this folder here. And then I have a composition that it created. And if I double click on that composition, I can see that it's brought in every single frame of frame or layer of my animation as well as the background layer and it's even pre-hidden that for us so it's nice because you can hide that over in Illustrator it brings it in it's already hidden you don't have to worry about it now the reason that there is a black background if I right click in this sort of blank space area here and go to composition settings I can look at the composition that it created for us because our artboard was 1080 by 1080 it set that up as 1080 by 1080 uh, pixel aspect ratio just kind of defaulted here. So 30 frames, square pixels. Uh, right now the resolution is half, but that's only because uh, that's just a preview mode, so we don't need to worry about that. It gave us a duration of five minutes. That's kind of just a, a, a base duration, if you will. That'll change later. We don't have to change that here. And the last thing that it did was it did a background color. And so we could change that background color, but it's not actually a background. That's just the sort of transparency color of this composition. So we can go back to the black transparency color, and that'll just help us see this animation since our animation is sort of reversed out onto black. Okay, so what I have now is each frame of the animation. And this is going to be, a, this is like a really super simple way to animate things in After Effects. It's almost like just frame by frame animation. Uh, but you're allowed to sort of create those frames in Illustrator, especially if Illustrator is a stronger program for you from an illustration and drawing standpoint. So what I want to do, let's just hide frame three and frame two and see what we got. So frame one is the first frame where he's sort of got his hat up on his head, and then frame three is the furthest out that it's tipped. So I want frame one 
to be the first thing that's shown. And I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit with this little toggle at the bottom here until we get down into the second marks. You can see now down here um, that we have zero, one, two, three seconds, four seconds. So this is probably all gonna take place within two seconds. So let's go even further in. So now what we see here is 15 frames. Remember our composition is 30 frames per second. That means every second there's 30 frames. So there's like 30 steps in between here. Every little step is a frame. You can see that in our uh, time code indicator over here in blue or up here. So every time we step, that's a frame. So let's say that we want each of these frames to be shown, or each of the frames of animation to be shown for 15 frames in our timeline. Well, I'm just going to, uh, I can either drag this out to 15 frames, and I can check that over here on this uh, display here. And then what I can do now is basically I'm going to bring back this purple bar here. This shows us where our layer exists on our timeline. And so what I can do with that is hold Option or Alt and use the right bracket. And that's going to bring that back to this point. So now after this point, our layer disappears. Super simple. It's literally just showing, hiding. Showing, hiding. Now we can't show it again. We would have to use opacity keyframes to do that. However, we don't need to do that in this case. We just need this to show for 15 frames and then hide. Alternatively here, we also need frame two to hide until this point and then show. So we'll hold the same uh, modifier key, option or alt, and I'm gonna use the left bracket this time right here at that mark. So now we have the first frame and then the second frame. Well, let's go out here another 15 frames, which would be at the one second mark since there's 30 frames per second. And then we'll show frame three. And we want him to also wait to appear until here. So option or alt, left bracket. And that just sort of chops that into there. So now we have one, two, and then three. Now we're doubled up here because our frame two is still showing. So we need him to quit showing it at this mark here, that one second mark. So make sure you have this layer selected, option or alt, right bracket. And now sometimes this is like about a frame off and we'll fix that here in a second. So we also want uh, to go out another 15 frames with the last animation, click on that layer, option or alt, right bracket. So now we have him tipping his hat. And if we scroll back, it looks like he's kind of tipping it back, right? So forward and back right here, is where I want the animation to end. Remember how I said the composition, we would change that later, the length of time? We're gonna change it here. To set up the end of our work area to be right here, all I have to do is hit the N key. That's N as in Nancy. So now it brought our work area back to here. The other thing that we can do is right click on work area, and we can trim comp to work area. It's gonna trim the composition to the size of our work area. So now our composition is only like a second and a half long. And I can play this through with spacebar and just see what we have so far. So he's tipping his hat, there's a little flicker at the end of the animation, and there's actually a period where these two are doubled up. It's hard to see, but they are. So what can I do? Well, now that I have these selected, I can actually just use the edge of these, where these layers exist here, and I can pull them in and out manually. Line this up to be right there at the same point, right at that second mark. And then there's a little bit of space here, a little gap here at the end. I can just pull that out to make sure that frame three shows all the way through our composition. So now if I space bar and play this, our little guy tips his hat and he goes back and forth, back and forth. Pretty cool. Well, what if we want him to do two things? What if we first off want him to uh, repeat forever because this is actually not a repeating. This is only the fact that you're reaching the end of your work area. It goes ahead and loops the uh, composition for you, but that's just a preview mode. That's not actually your animation repeating itself. So what if we want to repeat it? And what if we want him to do maybe this sort of animation where he tips his hat forward and then tips his hat backward? Well, we don't actually have to build that and I'll show you why. We're going to take this entire composition and make it a pre-composition and put it into another one. So let's go over here to our project panel. We've got this little composition button down here. It says create new composition. We're going to create one. And this composition, we'll just 
we'll just call this looping animation and uh, preset custom. So width, height, 1080, 1080. That's the same as our original one. We can have it the same or we can build a totally different composition and insert our uh, pre-comp into this one. I'll just keep it at 1080 by 1080 to make things simple. Square pixels, 30 frames per second. And then right now the duration is five minutes. Let's let's make this more like just maybe one minute. How's that? How's that sound? Or actually, let's do 30 seconds since our animation actually loops like every second and a half. It'll loop enough times in 30 seconds. So that's all good to me. We'll hit OK. And that created a new composition over here in our project pane. And you can see as you have multiple compositions open, down here there's tabs where you can click through each composition. What we're going to do is simply drag our draw a snowman composition down into the looping animation composition. And you'll see that it only exists here for about a second and a half. And that's because it only exists for a second and a half. Our composition's only a second and a half long. So how do we get this guy to loop forever? Because as this plays, he's just gonna disappear. Well, this part is weirdly complicated in After Effects. However, it's pretty simple if you follow these steps exactly. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna right click on this and we're gonna to go to time and enable time remapping. Now it creates two keyframes here. I need to go to my last keyframe and I need to actually drag my playhead to that keyframe. I can hold shift and it will lock in. So it's locked into that keyframe. I need to step back one keyframe. Now I can do that by like clicking this and instead of 116, I can go to 115 or the shortcut key. Uh, to step backward and forward is to hold command or control and use your right and left arrow keys to step backward and forward. Now let's zoom in to see what we're doing here. So you notice we've got the last keyframe and we stepped back one. I'm going to create a keyframe here by clicking on this diamond over here. And that's on the time remap property. Well now that I've done that I'm going to go to this last keyframe, double click it, insert zero into the time remap panel here that popped up, hit OK. Now I'm gonna click off of that keyframe and click back onto it. I don't know if you have to, but I definitely do, just for safekeeping. And then I'm going to delete with the delete key, that keyframe. We've set this up. Now we need to set up a little bit of a uh, expression on that time remap. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and click on the little stopwatch. And that's gonna drop down the expression uh, property here. And I'm going to click on the circle with the arrow inside of it. And that opens up a little menu. And inside this menu, I'm going to go to property. And then I'm going to go to loop out. And it's loop out cycle number of keyframes zero. We're just going to click on that. Okay, now we can click off like back onto our uh, time indicator cursor here. And then we can drag this out as far as we want. And I can zoom back out to see how far that is. Okay, and we can drag this guy back and play our animation and see what happens. Now I may have seen something that's already sort of screwy here. We'll find out. So I can just hit spacebar and play this animation. He should tip his hat and he goes back. Now for a brief moment there, he shows every single keyframe. The reason that we're seeing the multiple frames of animation on one is simply because we are uh, down sampling our resolution. So we're previewing this at half resolution and that's creating a little bit of a glitch there. If we go to full resolution and preview this animation, notice how that goes away. And this behaves like we would expect it to. It loops back and forth. So as we play this, as long as we've extended out that layer, our little guy is going to loop back and forth. So he's playing through that composition, going back to zero, playing through the composition, going back to zero. Well, what if we want him to sort of ping pong back and forth between uh, that animation. What if I want him to bring his hat back down to his head as smoothly as he sort of takes it off and tips it? If we look at this expression, all I have to do is click on it and I can edit it. There's a little cycle word in here. If I double click and highlight that and change that to ping pong, one word, then click off, that changes the way that this animation loops. And so now if we play this, it actually goes back and forth through that composition. So he tips his hat off and then goes back through it. And he'll do that for as long as this layer exists. So as soon as he gets past this layer, he'll disappear. So what you'll want to do is sort of zoom out and carry that all the way out through your composition if you want it to carry out through your composition depending on how long you want that animation to be. Awesome. 
Well, let me show you a couple more things and then we'll look at some export options. First off, what if I wanna edit this? What if I wanna make all the things that are red a yellow? Well, pretty cool because we kept this thing as the Illustrator layers, I can actually go back to my Illustrator file and now that I have every frame selected and let me just open up the background so we can see. Let's say I just, I can just click in Illustrator, I can click on uh, one of these colors here, so like this scarf, and I can go up to select, and then select same, and we'll select the same, uh, we'll select the same fill and stroke color. Now I can go to my properties, and I see that I have red as my stroke color. Well, if I want to change that to yellow, I can. Now if I click off this, everything is yellow. I can hit Command S or Control S to save that down, just right over the top of the Illustrator file we had saved and imported before. When I go back to After Effects. It's going to take just a moment and, well, there it goes. It already changed the color, so it's editable. That's pretty cool. It's linked and editable. What if I don't like the size of this snowman? Well, make sure I have all my layers selected. I'm going to select everything on here, not the background, and we're going to scale him down a little bit. I think he should be, uh, he should be a little smaller. Okay, now I can save that again. Go back over to my After Effects file, and boom, he scales down. He's smaller. Retaining layer sizes on that import. So remember, when we imported and we selected our AI file and we imported as a composition, retaining layer sizes is gonna kinda of screw up when you wanna resize something and uh, bring it back in and replace it. So that's why we just brought it in as a composition. Retaining layer sizes starts to make some of that stuff a little bit funky, especially if you're breaking apart pieces and we actually are bringing in the hat and the arms and the body as a different layer, thing like, things like that. So yeah, this animation still plays just like you would expect it to. And so that's all great. How about exporting? Well, we have plenty of export options here in After Effects. We can go down to export and you can add it to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, add it to the render queue. I like the Adobe Media Encoder queue. Um, that opens it up outside of After Effects itself. I also do this with Premiere. And uh, once this opens up, we'll look at a couple little options for saving this out and exporting it. So we've opened up and it'll take just a second for the dynamic linking to sort of work here and it'll pop in our little um, export here into the queue. So here it is, it's popped up now and we actually have several different presets we can click on. Uh, we can click on the drop down arrow if we don't wanna actually open up the preset and go into there. And you see you have tons of different ways that you can export this. You can export it as an animated GIF. Yes, I say GIF, not GIF. Uh, H.264, that'd be like an MP4 file. You can export as a JPEG sequence. You can export as a movie file, anything like that. Set up all your uh, settings here and then here. There's gonna be presets and then you can set if you click on this last guy, you can select where you want to save it, and all you have to do is hit the play button, and that's going to export to that spot as whatever preset setting you selected. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for following along. I hope you learned a thing or two. I think we covered a lot of stuff, especially some of the little pitfalls and glitches that we run into as well, kind of debug those a little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure you let me know in the comments. I'll also post the Illustrator um, tutorial that I created so that you can actually create this snowman, you know, inside of Illustrator over here. Uh, that's already on the channel. I'll put that in the description. Make sure you guys are um, aware of that if you want to follow that and learn a little bit of Illustrator designing this. I wanted to make this tutorial as easy as possible for anybody, whether you know anything about Illustrator or After Effects, you can create this little, this little snowman animation. We'll zoom in. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials, and I'll see you next time.